Hi gang, my name is Jay Brightland with Grand Welcome of Greater Orlando, and I want to talk to you today about three different properties that we that just came across my desk. One of our realtors actually asked us to specifically look at one property, and it's this 1872 Gobi Drive. And I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about what we're seeing with this property and what it means specifically to somebody who's looking to buy with some purchase power. Um, 1872 Gobi Drive, so where is this located? So here is the air, the great, greater Orlando area, and Orlando's up here in MCO Airport. Come down 528, down I-4. Here's Reunion. And then there's this uh, little property here that's uh, right 1872 Gobi Drive. And there's a, a couple of properties in Macapa here. This is this west side, this Windsor west side area. And some really great anemones for the houses in here. So I went out and found this number, this 1872 Gobi Drive, and it's 550 out on the MLS. The neighboring house, literally the neighbor house, is 680. The difference is 1,000 square feet, right, and two bedrooms. So you go from a five-bedroom to a seven-bedroom, and then its neighbor is a nine-bedroom. This isn't so. 735 for this list, and it's a nine six on 4,400 square feet. So all the way back down to the first one, what we're looking at here <clears throat> is, again, 2,000 square feet less, four bedrooms less. So what does that look like when you look on the short-term residential side? What does that look like for a potential return on your investment? And so we actually went ahead and created a vacation rental analysis. So the five bedrooms, you're looking at somewhere between 55000 and 65000 per year in rent coming in. With, there's a, there's, there are many variables that come into play here, but specifically what we're looking at is about fifty five to 65000 Really quick, and you'll see this in all three analysis, is that there's down times in January and September. So just a quick, this is what we do. We do deep cleanings in January and September, and we do uh, property upgrades in January and September. We want to look at when the trends are, when people are going to the theme parks, Disney, SeaWorld, Universal, Convention Center, when kids are out of school, when kids are on spring break, when, when kids are in the holidays. And you never want to be doing long-term work in your properties, your short-term rentals on, on those peak times. Now, these numbers, this is just what's going on on Airbnb, VRBO, generally speaking. 39% occupancy, 27% occupancy. We like to think that we can do better with our dynamic pricing to bring those percentages up as well as the revenue per night. And I'll show you where these numbers came from in a moment. But here, January, $3,100. That's 37 on the high end, low end, high end. And this is after our, uh, our commission comes out, right? So this is pure money coming in to you as a, an owner of in this case, 1872 Gobi. But here's the cool thing. Moving to its neighbor, 1804, the seven-bedroom the seven-bedroom house, almost the exact same with the anemones. All the complex stuff is the same, but your rent projection is a really big step up here, almost 100 grand, right? It's from 65 grand to 100 grand, and you go back to your listing on this, you're looking at a house that's 550 to 680. So there's a lot more cash on cash return. Now you look at this and you can see the pictures, right? Some of these pictures are dated already. So to really get to the high end on that return, uh, this builder grade bathroom here, there's some updates that can be done here to really make this property pop that would probably take it over a hundred grand. Because when you get to the Macapa property, this is 735, nine bedroom, six bath. When you look at the analysis on it, you're looking at 105 to 120. So yeah, more money, but not as much that you might expect going to two bedrooms more. Now here's a couple of things that are interesting on the nine bedrooms. Generally speaking, the occupancy percentages are higher. This one's not higher. So why would the seven bedroom be pulling more? Because generally speaking, the greater the bedrooms there are in, the, in this reunion four corners area, the more bedrooms, the higher the occupancy percentage. It's kind of a weird thing. But here's what we found out is when you move from the seven-bedroom to the five-bedroom and the nine-bedroom in this area, I'm going to go over to the map. 
in this area, this this whole little this little complex right here, this this spot right here, there's 600 five bedroom rentals, short term rentals. There's 400 nine bedroom rentals, but there's only 200 of the seven bedroom rentals. So it's a nice little sweet spot to get into. A lot of demand specifically for that style, for that that bedroom in this area. So when you're looking at a property, what, what's going to be the biggest return on my buck? It all depends on what your outcome is. But if you're looking in this area, in this particular particular area, look for the seven bedrooms because there's a lot of demand for it. And there's probably not a whole lot of properties coming on, again, because there's less of them. But if you have your search set and your realtor can set you up on this, go ahead and, and, and make sure that you've got that seven bedroom set up. And if you want one of these analysis done, I'm happy to provide them for you. This is the fancy PDF. I'm going to show you that this is the uh, the macabre, right? This is the high-end one. This is where our projections come from. We All of our data comes in and it gives us a, an average, an ADR, right? Almost $600 a night into the high season, spring break, $700 a night. And we're finding out that the average of the nine bedrooms in March in that area, they've got 20 nights booked out of 30. In July, same thing, 20. But in the low season, they're only booking for about a week. And you can see that the uh, you're, you're at 569 there, so that's your lowest night anyway. So that's when you come in to do your work. But again, we want to push to the higher end. Well, how can you get to the higher end? If you go back and look at these houses and you look at the condition that they're in, they're all okay. But like with this particular one, this is the, the middle of the range one. This is the seven bedroom. It's a nice pool. Oh, nice coffee makers, granite. But just some simple things like some furniture upgrades in here, it's really going to go a long way to get you that higher dollar. Getting this this updated, you know, you're not going to have to break an arm or a leg in here. You don't necessarily have to replace the tile, but you could. Just a couple things in here is really going to make this bathroom look stand up from its competitors. And again, same thing. Just it just looks kind of kind of plain. So our analysis takes that into consideration. <clears throat> so we can look at a higher end one that's available, seven bedroom, and look at what that rent would generally get to give you an idea of how much work you'd actually have to do to hit that hundred thousand dollars coming in on that seven bedroom house. But we give you all of these. Let's pull up. This is the uh, this is 1872 Gobi, right? So this is the lower end, 55 to 65. And then this is the highest, the 120 to 107. I guess I have that one up twice. But again, you can see line item. There's our management fee. And then there's the net rent coming out. And this is what we use to actually create the rent projection to our clients. We always ask that you set aside $100 per month in maintenance. What is not taken account in here is the mortgage and your property tax and, and insurance. That needs to be taken care of something on the homeowner side. Um, and it's really easy to just come in and then insert a couple rows here to start to create some of those line items. And we're happy to give this to you to work with so you can really get clear of what your return on investment will be with these properties. All right, gang, hope this was helpful.